What's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about RAID. Right. RAID! Or redundant array of independent disks. Now you can use RAID to set up multiple drives to increase your performance, your redundancy, and sometimes both. Now we're going to need to know a few vocab words before we start here, but don't worry, we're going to go through these vocab words as we go through each different version of a RAID. Now starting with RAID 0, we're going to need to know the term striping. So RAID 0 is an array that only utilizes striping. Now striping is what happens when it spreads the data of a file over multiple drives. The best advantage here is now when your processor wants to request data, it can actually get the same file sent from multiple drives. So theoretically, if your hard drives had, let's say, one gigabyte per second of speed to send to your CPU. Now if you had three of those, you can do three gigabytes a second because all three are running at their maximum speed sending the same file just in different portions. The main disadvantage here though is that if any one of those drives fails, then you lose all your data. With the more drives you have, that means increased performance because now you have more drives sending the data, but it also means that you have an increased risk so that if any one of those drives fails, the entire file is corrupted. Moving on to RAID 1. Now RAID 1 uses a new vocab word called mirroring. This technique replicates disk volumes in real time onto separate disks. Now, similar to striping, this has the advantage of read speed. So if your CPU needs to gather data, it now has the same data on multiple drives that it can access at the same time. The main disadvantage here is it uses a lot more storage. This can get a little costly depending on how much storage you're actually using. Now moving on, let's talk about RAID 2 because this is very similar to RAID 0 where it uses striping. This one though also uses a certain thing called Hamming code, which is used just to correct errors when processing data. Now the only problem with this is the Hamming code actually slows down the process a lot. So it's not really used today and it's been replaced by chips and hard drives that automatically do this through algorithms. So it's already been outdated just with the use of modern drives. Now, one thing we have to discuss before we move on is a new vocab word, and this is called parity. Now, parity is what we use for redundancy when you don't want to create a perfect mirrored image of all your data. This saves on storage and gives you the exact same redundancy as it would if you had mirrored the data. Parity, though, can get a little confusing because we have to do with the XOR operation and coding, and I don't want to get you guys too confused or thrown off here, so I've created a nice little example so you can understand what parity actually does. You have three sets of data. You can use the XOR operation with this data to calculate a new value. This new single byte can then be stored separately on a different drive, and this is your parity data. Now let's say for whatever reason, one of those previous bytes of data is corrupted or lost due to error. Your computer can then look to the previously calculated parity data and using the remaining data that is still intact, it can reverse the XOR operation and solve for the missing byte. Replace the missing data point and voila, we have recovered the missing data, but this time it only took us one byte of extra data to store instead of mirroring where you normally would have to copy all three of those bytes over. All right, so you think we're ready to talk about RAID 3 and 4? Yes. All right, let's do it. So RAID 3 and 4 are so similar, I'm actually gonna go through these at the same time. Both of them require at least three drives. We're gonna have two of them for striping, just like in RAID 0, and then you have one dedicated for parity data. Now the biggest disadvantage here for both of them is that dedicated disk for parity data is gonna be the bottleneck of your system as every single time you do a write operation, that disk has to calculate and store its parity data. The biggest difference between these two is that RAID 3 uses byte level striping, so each byte is separated on disks and stored in parity data, where RAID 4 uses block level striping. Now blocks are just slightly bigger, they're either 16, 32, 64, or 128 kilobytes each. So the biggest advantage for RAID 4 is it's better used for huge file sizes. Now, if you don't have those huge files, it really struggles with small files. The biggest disadvantage of this as well is that it's really bad at random reads and writes instead of sequential reads and writes. And again, most people, everyday users, are doing random reads and writes, not sequential ones. All right. Ooh, let's talk about RAID 5 now, because RAID 5 is the one that's most commonly used, and this is the one that outdated RAID 2, 3, and 4, and for good reason, because it's better at redundancy, and it's better at performance, so better of both worlds. Now, let's bring up a diagram here so it's a little easier for you to understand exactly what goes on in RAID 5. The only similarity this has to RAID 4 is the fact that it uses block level striping, but the biggest difference and the huge advantage here is that the parity data is no longer stored on a single drive, which was normally the bottleneck in most cases. This parity data is actually striped itself between all the drives. So with RAID 5, you can actually have any single drive fail and all the other drives can rebuild that drive. Back in the other raids though, you had to have just one parity drive that would recover the others. Now technically speaking, raid zero striping is faster 
for performance, but you lose all your redundancy, where the parity in RAID 5 gives you that. And RAID 5 is used amongst a lot of individual users for file servers because of its high performance, it's great for continuous data access, and it's very cost effective. All right, now let's talk about RAID 6 because it's so similar to RAID 5 where it uses the exact same techniques as RAID 5 does, except RAID 6 actually stores parity data twice. Now this does require you to add one additional drive to the setup, which can increase costs, and it has a minimum of four drives for RAID 6, but this time, any two of those drives can fail and your data is still secured because parity data for every block of data written writes two blocks of parity data and stripes those on two different drives every time. Now, this is best used for big, important data. So we're talking healthcare, banking, big businesses that you cannot afford to lose this data because it does cost a lot more in storage and drive capacity. Also one big disadvantage here are your writes. Just due to the fact that you now have to write two blocks of parity data, your write speeds are gonna be affected, but your read speeds will still gain the nice increased performance that RAID 5 offers. Now lastly here, let's talk about some nested arrays. And this is RAID 10, which is a, a lie. lie. I'm gonna finish off this oh, video. I thought I was gonna finish gonna it just... off. Oh, okay. Yeah. See you guys. That's more like it. All right, guys, I'm back. Let's talk about RAID 10, or as I was saying before, before I was rudely interrupted here, it is actually a lie. This is not RAID 10, this is RAID 1 plus RAID 0, which is just exactly how it sounds. This is actually a nested array. You're gonna need four drives to perform RAID 10. So starting out, let's go back and look at RAID 0, how it was set up before, with two drives striping data between each other. RAID 10 is pretty much this, except both those drives now you just duplicate through mirroring or RAID 1, and now you have RAID 10. You still end up losing half your storage to mirroring, but in this case you don't have to write any parity data so your write speeds are much faster. So whereas RAID 5 would actually have to take the data from all the other drives and reconstruct it to build your new data that was corrupted, which can take some time, RAID 1 plus 0 actually can just mirror that data and copy it straight over. So in the case of rebuilding missing data, it is a faster solution. Now it is true, RAID 10 does actually offer you some faster speeds. It can actually be up to twice as fast speeds as RAID 5, but the only problem here is you are still losing half your storage to that mirroring effect. So it's really gonna be up to you as the individual user which one you prefer. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like or a comment below if you like this video and subscribe for more like this. I'll see you all in the next one.